Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. In my very last video, I reported that there's an attorney within the XRP community named Fred Rispoli who has filed a class action lawsuit, a $42 billion class action lawsuit against former SEC chair Jay Clayton and former SEC director Bill Hinman. And I went through all the specifics. There's a 25 page document filed. I broke that down and I shared initial comments from the attorney that filed it. Uh, so I won't be going through the specifics of that. Just check out my very last video if you're interested in that information. Um, this video uh, can stand on its own, though. So if you're not aware of that, frankly, if you want to go back and watch the other video later, feel free. It's OK if you watch this first. I'm going to make sure you know the little bits that you absolutely have to know. And then if you want all of the very interesting details and there are quite a few, then, yes, check out the last video, which uh, was like 37 minutes long. So hopefully this one's a bit short, actually. But uh, Attorney John Deaton, in this video, I'm going to share with you what he had to say in response to this being filed. But uh, I will tell you, Mr. Deaton uh, has shared his comments and concerns surrounding this class action lawsuit. Um, he's, he's expressed that he's concerned that the lawsuit won't be taken seriously and that uh, the judge might even throw out the entire case from the get-go, effectively. So I'm going to share with you his thoughtful perspective, and then I'm going to share with you some comments from uh, Fred Rispoli because he, uh, he he typed up a new thread after uh, initial feedback from the XRP community on this. And in and, and the lawsuit, it's, it's very interesting because, again, it's specifically going after Clayton and Hinman, not specifically the SEC. And this is effectively what so many of you in the community have been calling and hoping for. Now, we'll see if it gets traction. There is no guarantee. And, and you, you see what John Deaton has to see. You can f form your own opinions there. But um, it's, I, I tell you what, I'll just say this. I am thankful for our community that, and, and happy that people out there trying to do stuff. So um, I'm, just, I'm just here to share the information. You guys, I'm going to share with you the information, perspective from Attorney John Deaton, perspective from Attorney Fred Rispoli, who filed this class action lawsuit. And you can make your own decision as uh, come to your own conclusion as to whether or not this is helpful or it's harmful or maybe things could be adjusted to make things better. And by the way, Attorney Rispoli has made clear he's uh, he, he's going to be tweaking this thing. And we'll, I'll explain a bit about that as we go through. But uh, before going any further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Now you can see on your screen right now that Attorney Deaton retweeted a, 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 a tweet from Eleanor Turret, who is a journalist at Fox Business Network. Eleanor wrote the following earlier today. A class action lawsuit has been filed against former SEC Chair Jay Clayton and his former Director of Corporation Finance, Bill Hinman, for tortious interference in all XRP Ledger network users. Uh, valid business expectancy in the XRPL network. And uh, she also went on to note that she has reached out to both Clayton and Hinman for a response to this. To my knowledge, she hasn't gotten anything back yet. I don't know if she will. Other than, <laughs> Or if she gets anything, it's going to be a no comment. Maybe that. I'd be surprised because they, they don't like to address this type of stuff. That's very clear. We'll see, though. And so uh, Attorney Deaton retweeted that from Eleanor, and then he shared his thoughts, and he wrote the following. Uh, and, and again, keep in mind, as I go through this again, this is a $42 billion class action lawsuit. John says, I have many direct messages about the putative class action filed in Arizona. Here are my honest thoughts. I was the first person to publicly raise the conflicts of interest in gross appearances of impropriety related to Clayton and Hinman. One of the alternative motives I raised in the writ of mandamus filed only nine days after the Ripple lawsuit, was about Clayton's personal gain. Immediately after the case against XRP was filed, I wrote the lawsuit appeared to be used as a weapon. And if I could just pause to note that even that early on, without all the specifics, John Deaton's gut was absolutely spot on. Look at all the stuff that we've uncovered. There's a lot there, obviously. What, what, what are the motives? I mean, fine, we can't get in the hearts and minds of these guys. But we've uncovered so much appearances of impropriety, actual monetary benefits that only make sense if you understand the full context of everything that's going on. It's amazing. And, and he cited that early on that that's what he thought. 
And so it's interesting. And so now that he's saying that he's concerned that this this actually this lawsuit, he's actually concerned, by the way, that this could hurt the SEC versus Ripple case. Um, and Fred doesn't think so. And I'll explain why after I get through John Deaton's thread. But but John has expressed concern that this this forty two billion dollar class action lawsuit uh, could actually uh, harm Ripple and XRP holders. Anyway, let's continue with the thoughts. And we'll, we'll break it down. One of the alternative motives I raised in the writ of mandamus uh, filed. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That's one I just read. My bad. I scrolled and I lost my spot. Moving on. Many of you may recall I wrote the Ethereum Free Pass memo and the original Undisputed Facts timeline that has 6 million impressions. He's not kidding here. Look at this. <laughs> here are the Twitter metrics. 6 million impressions from this thread. I remember covering that originally back in October. That's incredible. 6 million people have seen that. Anyway, John continues. In other words, I fully understand the sentiment and frustration that people have regarding Clayton. Henman, and lawsuit against XRP. I also know that we live in an age where people want results today. I need to make clear that I had nothing to do with filing the Arizona case action against Clayton uh, versus Clayton and Hinman. People have asked, uh, asked me about pursuing them and the, the SEC for damages. I've maintained that you cannot rush a case where there are issues of sovereign and qualified immunity. I've communicated that once you file a case either against them personally or against the SEC itself, there will be motions to dismiss based on multiple grounds. Rule 12b6 motions, which is failure to state a claim, uh, also motions to dismiss based on qualified immunity, etc. When going after a government employee in their personal capacity, it is best to have as much evidence as possible to demonstrate to the court that these government actors were acting outside the scope of their employment. Now, many of you believe that uh, this has already been proven, and I understand why. Some unbiased people, however, like Charles Gasparino and Eleanor Terrett, pause the note, both with Fox uh, Business Network, uh, may admit that it looks bad, but are not convinced there's been actual wrongdoing or criminal laws violated. Uh, Fred Rispoli, so that's the attorney that filed this class action lawsuit, Fred Rispoli filed the case against Clayton and Hinman. If Fred knows the judge presiding over this case, and he is extremely confident that the judge will deny the initial motions and grant Fred the ability to engage in liberal discovery, then it could prove to be a good move. Notice how the complaint makes reference for the need to engage in discovery. It reads as follows, quote, Plaintiff believes substantial evidentiary support will exist for and further support the allegations set forth herein after a reasonable opportunity for discovery, end quote. And so, he's, so what he's pointing out here is that Fred, who filed this, this class action lawsuit, is saying if we can get into discovery, get the facts out there, it will further support what we're stating. And John Deaton points out in this next comment He's concerned as to whether or not that's actually going to be allowed, though. And John writes the following. The problem is, if the judge doesn't allow Fred to subpoena third parties or get emails, etc., the case could get thrown out quickly. Look how hard it is for Ripple to get discovery, and Ripple was actually sued. Fred's plaintiff wasn't actually sued. The problem for XRP holders is that if this case isn't taken seriously and thrown out what if a judge writes something like, the claims against Clayton and Hinman are totally without merit? Imagine that. I bet CNBC will finally report on it, and Clayton and Hinman will be happy. Now, why wouldn't this case be taken seriously? Well, unfortunately, it is written in a manner that attempts to entertain. Calling Clayton Homer and Hinman Willie has a cartoonish ring to it, but maybe Fred knows the judge and he or she will be receptive. So I'm going to pause to note right here what he's talking about for those that didn't see the last video or haven't seen the latest news on this. This is the original version of Fred Rispoli's class action lawsuit against Clayton and Hinman. I only need to read the top part so that you can see what I'm talking about. Actually, I don't even need to read it. It's on your screen if you want to read it, if you want to pause and take a look. He's calling Jay Clayton Homer, and he's calling Bill Hinman Willie, and those are the names that he calls them throughout the entire document. And I did mention 
and, and nothing against Fred whatsoever. In fact, I, I appreciate the attempt just to be super duper clear. I don't want this to come across wrong. Nothing against anybody. I, I'm just reporting on what's being here because like that's what I do. This is an XRP centric YouTube channel. I cover what's going on here. This is what's going on here. Uh, but I, I did, I, I was honest in my last video when I mentioned upon reading that, I, I wasn't sure if this entire thing was a joke or not because I thought, no way. Somebody's going to call them Homer and Willie and an official class action lawsuit. I was like, come on. And so I, I wasn't really sure. But then I was like, well, it did come from Fred, though. And I've covered some stuff from him on my channel before. And he seems to be a thoughtful individual. And so I, I went to double check. And sure enough, that it, it is indeed real. This is a very genuine lawsuit that has actually been filed here. So anyway, that's what attorney Deaton um, was talking about there. And um, I'll also mention, and I'm going to get into the specifics, but um, uh, Fred Rispoli actually uh, got feedback from the community and decided that he's going to adjust this and he's going to pull out those names so that it reads more seriously. So it'll be Jay Clayton and William Hinman, which I think is the right move. So nothing against him, whatever. I thought it was funny, to be honest with you, but yeah, probably not the best <laughs> idea to file it like that. So again, nothing against him. I got a kick out of it, but yeah, probably best to change it, to be honest. Um, and then there was this moving forward with attorney John Deaton now. Um, I certainly wouldn't write that before Judge Torres or the federal judge I filed the writ of mandamus for. So again, since I just broke the flow of that, what he's saying is he wouldn't have written those names, Willie and Homer, before Judge Torres or the federal judge where he filed the writ of mandamus for. Then John continues. The complaint alleges tortious interference with business expectancy, but never explains what that business expectancy was. Is it simply price appreciation? The complaint alleges Clayton and Hinman filed a lawsuit against Shannon O'Leary and all other XRPL network users. Technically, they didn't, and I was denied a motion to intervene, and this will be challenged immediately. The complaint alleges, quote, Homer and Willie concocted the speech outside of the scope of their employment with the SEC, end quote. Uh, and by the way, just to be clear, when he says the speech, what's being referenced there is the Billy Boy Hinman Ethereum free pass speech from 2018. John continues now. But we know there are 63 emails and 68 drafts and edits and comments from many other SEC employees. There are other issues that concern me, but the bottom line is I fear that there are possible other reasons for rushing this lawsuit and using the language it did. What those reasons are, I don't know. After all the hard work that myself Empower Oversight, The Digital Asset Investor, Brad Kimes, Crypto Law, Moon Lambo, Tag XRP, On the Chain, Crypto Eddie, and Steve, well, let me make sure I get the last name right here, and uh, Stefan Huber, uh, and all the other sleuths have contributed, I will hate to possibly see some judge dismiss the case and hurt a future case. Fred's thread said, no investigation is coming. Let me just pause to note. There was a thread from um, from Fred Rispoli that I already did cover, and it was from like I don't know, twelve hours ago at this point. Uh, but so it was his initial thread announcing, "Hey, here's why I'm doing the lawsuit effectively. Here's why I'm I'm filing this class action." Um, so that thread I already covered. I'm not going to cover it in this video. I'm going to cover some new information from Fred after I get through this information from John Deaton. So anyway, John Deaton said the following: Fred's thread said, "No investigation is coming." Although one may not be coming very soon, he hasn't been privy to the progress made in convincing some that certain inquiries need to be made. My fear is that I run into someone saying to me down the road, didn't a federal judge look at this and throw it out? With all that said, of course, I hope my concerns don't come true. I hope Fred is confident he will be taking, uh, taken serious and his judge will allow discovery. I hope he has the research and case law ready to defend the qualified and sovereign immunity challenges. Anyways, those are my thoughts. To be candid, as amicus counsel, I needed to make sure that this lawsuit isn't conflated with what we are attempting. So there you go. Perfectly reasonable, respectful, thoughtful analysis from attorney John Deaton. And um, Fred Rispoli said the following um, after getting feedback from the XRP community. And then the final thing I'll share with you in this video is um, his thoughts after reading uh, what attorney John Deaton had to say, but he wrote the following uh, hashtag XRP army. It's been a heck of a day. I wanted to share some thoughts after a crazy day. First, the amount of support and good vibes from everyone, uh, although not totally unexpected was even far beyond what I thought it would be. And I had high expectations. 
Second, very heartwarming to see some of you de help defend against the trolls. While appreciated, please don't feel obligated. I am a litigator, and I've been through much, much worse battles than Twitter hate. Third, Homer and Willie. Biggest valid criticism to date. Let me say that those two names were much, much worse in the original draft. So let's pause to say, I would love to know what the original two names were of Homer and Willie were not the worst. What was he calling them in the original draft? I bet I'd be laughing my ass off. Anyway, Fred continues. The names Homer and Willie match the respect level these two deserve. Yeah, here, here. Claps for that one. That's for damn sure. Uh, but I am going to amend the complaint to revert to Clayton and Henman. No sense walking into an easy motion to strike. The purpose of Homer and Willie has been conveyed. Keep emotions more in check, lesson learned. Fourth, this will be a major battle. If I were defense counsel, I would file a Rule 12b6 motion to dismiss for failure to state a claim. The claim of tortious interference with a business expectancy is not easy. Key issue is whether blockchain network users have a business expectancy in the network such that unfair and improper interference violates a duty. Uh, note, I didn't say regular competition, which is just normal competitive business activity and wouldn't justify a tort claim. So let's pause. This is the uh, one of the points that Attorney John Deaton brought up this this rule, and I'm not a familiar, I'm not a lawyer, so of course I'm not familiar with this, but Rule 12b6. Uh, you know, motion to so that if he were the defense, he'd motion to dispense for fa uh, motion to dismiss rather for failure to state a claim, the claim of tortious interference with a business expectancy, which is what attorney John Deaton brought up. But uh, there's a reason that he filed what he filed. You'll see as I go through this. Let me read a little bit further. So Fred continues. From my review, the application of this claim to blockchain network users has never been tested legally. And this isn't like Web1, where one company owned the protocol. Every blockchain user owns a piece of the network in addition to the many utility factors. Attorney John Deaton's motion to intervene was never tried before either, but the uniqueness of the situation and the momentous impact to everyday people got XRP holders a seat at the table in the Southern District of New York. Fifth, our case should not have any legal impact on the SEC versus Ripple case whatsoever. <coughs> oh, sorry, folks. Excuse me. That, that one came out. I'm going to drink some water. That's what I'm going to do. Sorry about that. That came out of nowhere. <coughs> All right. Moving forward. Uh, purposefully, Ripple is not even mentioned in the complaint. Our case is against two people acting totally outside their governmental roles and authority. If we lose on a motion to dismiss, it will most likely be because the court finds either one, plaintiffs don't have a business expectancy in a decentralized blockchain network, or two, defendants Clayton and Henman will be afforded some type of governmental immunity. With two happening, then the next hope is suing the SEC, which I will not be doing, as others are already filling that role. So I'll just pause to note, Fred does recognize that those concerns, points one and two that I just read, Attorney Deaton brought those up and he's recognizing him saying, those are risks, but you know, the, the approach he's taking here, it's uncharted territory for him. So I do understand what he's saying there. It's uncharted territory. This, this hasn't really been tested in court. So we're just going to have to see what happens. Anyway, Fred continues. To summarize, any early loss in our case will be very limited to the specific circumstances. Again, this was done with intent. Lastly, this is decentralized justice, baby. So how about some help? We don't need to have every factual allegation in the complaint, but if you think there is something major missing, a uh, typo, so on and so forth, then you can tweet at him. And so I actually did share some of that. And then uh, the rest of what he has in his study just says, uh, thanks again effectively for the support. And uh, here's what he ended up saying uh, when he was asked the following. Hey, Fred, have you read John Deaton's thread regarding his thoughts? May I ask why you feel comfortable sticking to Willie and Homer? Just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. I'm no lawyer, so I don't know. Also, I noticed a spelling mistake in the complaint. Uh, Rouge instead of Rogue. That's one of the ones that I caught, too, actually. Uh, and then Fred said the following. Uh, Red thread and highly respect Mr. Deaton, but this lawsuit was pled to specifically not interfere in that case. Not going to stick to Homer and Willie either. We'll generously refer to their birth names in amended complaint. 
Uh, still can't believe I switched two spellings of rogue. <laughs> Thank you. So there you go. So anyway, cool stuff all around. Um, I'd love to hear what you all think about this. How do you feel about the approach? Um, it's it's certainly interesting. As, I'll tell you what, as long as this isn't going to harm the SEC versus Ripple case, and there are two varying opinions on whether or not that's the case, if that's the case, then I say have at it, see what happens. I have no idea what the likelihood of this is, since, again, I don't have any sort of legal background whatsoever. Uh, but it does seem to be the case that both Deaton and Rispoli do think that this, the way I'm reading them anyway, the way that I'm interpreting what they've said, it seems like probably a bit of an uphill battle. But, uh, hey, you never know. You definitely don't know if you don't try. So we shall see. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambo. <laughs>